What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our time unit or fraction unit, depending on uh, why you're joining us today. And today we are talking about adding fractions with like denominators using a clock. So let's wake on up and see what we're doing today. Our objective today, today I will be able to add fractions with like denominators by using a clock as a visual model. So you might already know how to do this, but we're going to be proving it by showing our work on a clock face today using an analog clock. So first of all, we need to know some math vocabulary. This should be in your notes. If you don't have your notes, you can check out our description to this video. We have guided a guided note link there. You can print out or just type on online. We'd love to have you do that. We believe that when we're doing math, we should be taking notes so we can go back and look at that if we have questions or are trying to practice. And we're going to start with our basic addition problem today. Okay, we're going to label this. We have three parts to an addition equation, and the first two are called the add end. Now, the add end, right, are the two pieces you are adding together. That makes sense. That's why they're called the add end. So, two pieces you are adding together. The answer to an addition problem is called our sum. The sum is the answer or the total, right, of our add-ends. Here at InstructBeats, we believe that you shouldn't just know what you're doing. You should know why you're doing it in the vocabulary of what you're doing, right? We want to be able to teach good math vocabulary so that you sound smart. So obviously, we're doing adding fractions today, okay? And as always, we have our steps. Our first step is you need to split the clock face into the denominator of your fraction. And I'll show you an example of that. Just go ahead and write these down for right now. Step number two, you're going to shade in the numerator of the first add-end. Step number three, you're going to shade the numerator of the second add-end, okay? And then step number four, you're going to count the total pieces shaded in to find the sum. So go ahead and pause the video if you need more time to write those down. If not, let's take a look at an I do problem. All right, so we have one fourth plus two fourth, and we're trying to find the variable t. In other words, we're just trying to find out an unknown number or quantity, and we've labeled it with a letter, okay? So the first thing we know that our denominator for both these fractions are four. So we're gonna shade our fraction, or sorry, split our fraction into four equal groups, just like we did when we were talking about fractions of a clock. So now I have four equal groups, okay? And I'm gonna shade in one fourth because that's my first add end, right? I'm starting with one fourth and then I'm gonna add two fourths to it. So if, I, if I'm starting with one fourth, now I need to shade the numerator of my second add end. I need to shade two fourths more. So I'm gonna shade in two more equal groups, okay? Here we go. I can try to make it look pretty, get the sides in. Uh, but we're doing math today, not art. So although, you know, math is art and art is math. It's all interconnected. And now I can count the total pieces that I shaded in. And so I have one, two, three. And if you notice, my denominator did not change four. Okay, so T equals three fourths. That was the sum of my two add ends, one fourth plus two fourths. Now, one thing I want you to notice is the denominator didn't change. When you're adding fractions, you add the numerators and the denominators don't change. If I did four plus four, that would have made my denominator eight. And I'd say my answer was three eighths, which it isn't because if I split this into eights, I actually have six eighths, okay? So part of the reason we like to teach adding fractions on a clock is because you can see the rules that the denominators don't change. The other thing I want you to notice is the number one rule of fractions. The number one rule of fractions is to add, subtract, or compare fractions, the denominators have to be the same. You notice that the denominators are both four, okay, which means I could split my clock face into four equal groups and add my numerators. If they were not, I could not have added them in this way. I'd have to use some unusual thinking and draw it completely differently. So that's our number one rule. Let's try a we do problem. So here I have three add-ins. I have one six, three six, and one six, and I want to find the sum. In other words, I want to find what x equals. Again, x is our variable, just equals an unknown quantity or number, and we're trying to figure out what that number is. The number one rule is my denominators all have to be the same, which they are. And now I want to do step number one, which is split the clock face into the numerator, or sorry, into the denominator of my fractions, which is six. All right, I just did it very crookedly, but if you notice, I had 10 minutes in each of these, so I used my fraction knowledge. 
in my time to help me figure that out. And so the first thing I want to do is shade in my first addend. So I'm starting with one sixth, right? Now here I actually have two more add-ins and that's okay. So my next step would be to shade in the numerator of the second add-in. So I want to add three six more to this. So that's gonna be one, two, three. And now I have one more add-in and that's okay. I want to just add one more here. And when I shade that in and kind of go back to make it look at least a little bit nice. Okay, my elementary school art teacher would be very upset if I couldn't color inside the lines very well. When you do that, you see that the numerator now is five and your denominator still didn't change. It's still six, right? There's still six total pieces and your numerator is still five. Again, when you add fractions, the denominator does not change, right? That just tells you how many total uh, pieces there are that the whole split into. The numerator is the one that's telling you how many pieces you're talking about. That's the number that changes. So one plus three plus one was five and my denominator stayed a six. All right, here's our last one. Okay, we have the U try, um, and I made the denominator 12. If you're struggling splitting this into 12, look at the hours. Because there are 12 hours on a clock, you could use those to help you split these up. Hopefully you just paused the video and tried it, and we're gonna do it. If you are not there yet, it's okay. You can do this as another we do problem with me. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna split the clock face into the denominator of 12, because that's the denominator of my fraction. My number one rule of fractions is to add, subtract, and compare fractions. The denominators have to be the same, and they are all 12, which is good. So now I'm gonna split this into 12 equal groups, okay? I'm gonna do my best here. You could have done it differently than me, I mean, as, as far as you splitting them up. Um, you should be trying to go through that part in the middle right there. Um, a little bit harder than one might think, but that's, ooh, that, ooh, that one was not good. I'm just gonna cheat and get lines. I should have done that first. Um, so now I have 12 equal groups, so I want to shade in the numerator of my first atom, which is just one. So I'm starting with one twelfth, okay? Shade in as best I can. And now I want to add two more twelfths here. Again, my denominator is not changing. I'm just adding my pieces, which are my numerator. My total is still staying the same, which is why at the end the total will be, or the denominator will still be 12. And now I want to add my third add-in. So I need to add five more pieces. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. I want to add all of these pieces to that by shading them in. Try to be kind of neat there. There we go. And when I do that, I can see that A equals eight twelfths. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces shaded in, and my, I still have 12 total pieces, which means my denominator didn't change. Again, I'm saying it a lot because it's super important. So it's the number one mistake people make when they add fractions. They add the denominators and tell me the denominator is 36. That can't be true because I still only have 12 equal groups. So when you add fractions, you add the numerators, just like we shaded in the pieces, and the denominator still say stays 12 because there are still 12 equal pieces on my clock face. Hopefully that was an awesome introduction for adding fractions for you. Um, a very easy way to show your work is by doing it on a clock face. It's a great way to introduce fractions and equal groups and adding and subtracting them. We hope you'll check out our other songs and playlists. Check out our lapse time song. It's awesome. We loved having you with us. Please subscribe and like the video if you haven't done that. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And check, out, check us out on all of those sites as well. Instruct the Beats, out!